Hey guys, so the other day I had an interview with Peter Scobas, uh, who is a data scientist with experience at companies like TuneIn, uh, which is an audio streaming company in San Francisco. And in this interview, uh, he shared some tips that he used to uh, get his six-figure data science job, and I thought it was really helpful. So I want to share it with you guys today, and hopefully you'll find it helpful too. Uh, so your data science job at TuneIn was your really first data science job, right? Right, yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about like what you actually did there? Yeah, um, so I feel like the, the work I did there can kind of be separated into sort of a couple of different categories. Um, one uh, sort of part of my job was kind of helping uh, product managers um, design and implement and analyze uh, A-B tests. So I'd sit down with a product manager and discuss, um, you know, a product or a feature change, uh, and sort of the best way to test that change, um, and then help design the experiment, and then uh, sort of put together an analysis of that experiment uh, to sort of help the product team uh, think about how to move forward. Um, another aspect of um, my work there was sort of designing uh, various metrics and putting together. Uh, different types of dashboards to help, you know, the marketing team or the product team uh, sort of be able to understand how things are working. Um, but uh, a lot of my work, and I feel like sort of the bulk of my work was centered a little bit more around uh, modeling and prediction. Um, so answering things like, uh, you know, if our customers did X, Y, or Z, um, can we predict what sort of they want to do on the platform? Or can we put, you know, a monetary value on a certain feature? Um, you know, meaning if we if we got rid of that feature, how many of our, um, you know, paying customers would would churn? Right. Uh, so prior to this uh, call, you were telling me that you struggled a little bit when you were trying to get your first data science job. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Um. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I said, like uh, a couple of the the issues was, um, you know, learning uh, like the different type of skills that I needed um, and, and sort of stuff like that. Um, but I kind of felt like there's five uh, sort of like really um, like major things that I learned that are like super important for getting your first data science job. Um, and the first one is, is sort of uh, just making sure that you learn SQL. It's kind of the sort of like foundational skill of data science. Um, and, it, and it's definitely not the most like exciting skill, but it's just like incredibly necessary. Um, another thing that's sort of really important is, uh, you know, just being able to sort of like explain your experience in a way that makes sense to product managers and to e executives. Um, so when you're in school and when you're doing research, you're, you know, mostly surrounded by other technical people. Um, but when you're working for a company, you know, you're you're going to be interacting, you know, with non-technical people all the time. Um, and then, all right. Um, so um, let's go through those uh, sort of one by one. Okay. Uh, so for SQL, what do you think would be a good way to learn uh, SQL? Um. So what I think is probably the, the easiest way is to kind of just like learn by doing. Um, and there's definitely a lot of um, uh, a lot of tutorials out there um, that uh, I feel like kind of differ in how helpful they are. Um, I found this tutorial um, from Mode Analytics. Um, that was kind of like an introduction to SQL that I, I thought was super helpful. Um, and, you know, it was able to sort of help me prepare for like even the, what I thought were the hardest sort of SQL questions that I was given during the interview process. Right. Uh, okay. So for your second point of, uh, being able to explain your experience in a way that makes sense to PMs and executives, uh, could you maybe you know, exp could you maybe give us an example or uh, maybe tell us a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, so um, I I felt like when I was first starting to apply 
like, I don't know why I didn't think about this, um, but just that there's going to be, you know, product managers and executives that are going to be part of uh, the interview process. Um, and so, um, you know, a lot of times you'll be asked, um, you know, by them to, to talk about, you know, like a time that you use data to, uh, you know, like analyze a problem or like analyze like a business problem. Um, and sort of when I first started interviewing, I feel like I prepared for that question, but I prepared to answer that question to like other technical people. So like, I felt like I had a good answer to that, but I only had a good answer to that when I was explaining it to someone who like had a background in programming or had a background in statistics. And so I basically had to sort of like go back and figure out a good way to explain it, you know, but to someone who who doesn't have that background. Uh, so how did you change that in your particular case? I mean, the way um, yeah, so um, at uh, UC Berkeley, um, I uh, researched uh, carbon taxes um, and sort of the impact of them uh, on like manufacturing prices. And so sort of in my whole like technical discussion of that, I talked about the different models I used and the different assumptions I made. Um, and uh, what I tried to do when I shifted that um, to sort of talk to you know a product manager about that, um, I tried to walk them through more, like a more, I don't want to say like a simple version, but just like talking about like how prices are impacted by taxes and sort of like how um, like we went about the the process of like trying to determine by how much. Uh, so I guess you focused on the end result more than uh, the process itself, like. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, less on, um, I feel like the sort of like technical part of like how we got there and yeah, more about like sort of like the impact of that project, um, like what it means, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, let's go through the rest of the tips you had earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So another, another tip I have is just, uh, sort of putting together and, and, uh, showcasing personal projects. Uh, I think that this is sort of especially important um, for your first data job and, and um, when you're uh, sort of like inexperienced and, and maybe don't have much experience outside of school. Um, and this can be something as simple as just kind of going online uh, and finding like a free public data set um, and putting together visualizations and, and sort of doing your own analysis. Um, or in my case, what I what I also did was I just kind of used some connections, um, and I was able to uh, convince a company to to basically let me do sort of like basic data science work for them for for free as just sort of like a this is like a little bit of experience I could put on my resume and and sort of like talk um, to talk about to to companies during interviews. Nice. Um... What kind of data analysis did you do for them? Um, so it was mostly just like visualization stuff. Um, it was a uh, it was like a commercial real estate company um, that had like various um, like sale and purchase data um, on like different uh, like real estate transactions like across the United States. Um, and so I um, just put um like a couple of visualizations together about like um where different like types of real estate transactions were happening um and sort of like what different trends um they could see stuff like that all right um do you have any tips on how to like showcase uh your personal projects yeah um i think like a really good way to do it is to just sort of like uh, put together like a basic um, website um, where um, you can, you know, if you're putting together like different types of visualizations, you can, um, you know, like post a couple of them there, uh, sort of like talk about them, and then also um, have a link to 
uh, to code to um, like where your code is, um, so that um, when you um, you know are interviewing um, and you've sent out your resume and it has that website you know on your resume, uh, recruiters and whoever else is looking um, would have a chance to sort of like browse your um, website and just have like a general idea of um, sort of your skills related to that. Right. Uh, okay, so earlier you mentioned that you have uh, five tips. Uh, I think we've discussed three so far. Uh, SQL, uh, being able to explain your experience in a certain way, and showcasing uh, projects. What were the other two? Um, yeah, so the other one, uh, or one of the other ones, is uh, just um, being able to sort of like showcase your like business or your product sense. Um, so you can kind of think of this as like, um, you know, being able to discuss with an interviewer how you would use data to define like the success of a product or whether like certain aspects of the business are doing well. Um, and, you know, being able to like understand and ask questions about like the product roadmap, sort of like stuff like that. Um, I think that, uh, like your technical skills are super important, but you know at the end of the day, your job is uh, you know to help the company you know grow or scale or you know improve their revenue stream or something like that. Um, so you need to take sort of like your background and always think of it in terms of like more of like a business mindset. So how did you cultivate your business and product sense? Uh, I feel like a couple of ways. One was uh, I, I had found this uh, tutorial that was on, it was, it was also on mode analytics, actually. Um, and it was sort of like a, like a business analytics type thing um, where it was more um, like focused on like case study questions, um, like in terms of like, oh, um, this metric for some like hypothetical company is down, how would you go about like thinking through sort of like the process um, of like trying to figure it, figure out like why that's the case. Um, and I felt like that was helpful to prepare for like some of those case questions um, during the interview process. Um, but I also feel like um, what was also kind of helpful was like really just as I was going through the interview process, like learning more about um, like various startups and like thinking through uh, like what their goals were and just like thinking about, like, oh, like I can use data to, you know, help answer this question or, or like, oh, I, I know what I could do for, for this. Um, and just kind of like stop thinking um, about, you know, like data and statistics in a vacuum and instead think of it more as like, I can do this or use this methodology to like answer this question, sort of like stuff like that. Uh, so was it like using some apps and thinking about how you might use data for them? Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's like a like a really good strategy. Um, is um, you know, like say you do have an interview at I don't know. Let's just let's just say like uh, like Twitter or something. Um, you know, you could you know, use the app and uh, think about like, oh, like I think um, like this would be like a good like product improvement or a good feature improvement. Or, you know, I wonder if like this is like a pain point for users. And so you think about those questions and then think about to answer that, I wish I had like this data or I think like, you know, this type of data would be super helpful. Um, and just kind of, yeah, like having an example of um, like a product and, and and sort of thinking about ways to improve it and and sort of how you would um, like define improvement or how you would define like success of a feature. Okay, and what was the last tip you had? Um, the last one was like being really good at the basics. Um, I think that a lot of aspiring um, like data science and, and analytics applicants. Um, kind of just immediately jump into, you know, fancy machine learning and, and deep learning models. 
um, and they kind of forget about the basics of uh, of like how to run a good A/B test, how to clean data, sort of the basics of statistics, stuff like that. And you know, there's definitely a place for you know machine learning and deep learning type stuff. But for your first data science job, you're most likely not going to be working on you know that type of stuff. Um, you know, unless you are coming out with a PhD, and like even then. Um, you just don't have, you know, any experience. And so like, there's just a good chance you're not going to be on, um, you know, a team that sort of has the capability to, to let you do a lot of that work. Um, and so just like knowing the basics um, and starting there is what I think is sort of like a, a really good strategy for, for landing your first uh, data job. And uh, how do you actually become good at those basics? I mean, in terms of like programming, I mean, we talked a little bit about like just being really good at SQL um, to get better at stuff like Python and R. I think, you know, what's really important is, um, you know, like finding your own data or um, something like that and just kind of um, focusing on, um, you know, getting better at cleaning data, getting better at, um, you know, putting together you know, clean, nice looking visualizations. Um, and then in terms of statistics, um, I don't really have like a great recommendation for um, like a statistics course, um, but uh, I would definitely, you know, spend time um, like reading about how to run a good A-B test, just sort of um, the more like stats 101 stuff that I feel like people just like tend to forget about sometimes. Okay, so those are Peter's five tips. Uh, but one thing he didn't mention is that in a lot of data science interviews, they ask you probability related questions. And to practice those, I actually recommend this video's sponsor's website, Brilliant.org. Uh, Brilliant's courses have interactive problems and coding challenges that help you master math and computer science concepts through actively solving problems, not just passively reading. Uh, if you go to their probability course, you'll be able to find the kinds of questions that tend to be asked in data science interviews. So if you want to get started with it and start learning by doing, uh, just go to my referral link, uh, brilliant.org/csdojo, and the first 200 people who sign up through that link will get 20% off the premium subscription. Uh, anyway, thank you as always for watching my videos. And you know, if you ask me about my eyes, uh, thank you. They are getting better, but you know, it's taking me some time. So you might see something, you know, strange or weird, you know, about my eyes, but hopefully it's gonna go away in a couple months. Um, all right, anyway, see you in the next video.